Man lūdzu būtu jā... I've got a question to Dr. Bundule. I'm afraid Mrs. Bundula has gone. Then I have no question. Sorry. Perhaps you can give your question by way of a comment. My comment is as follows. All that I have heard here about the bonus program, I don't want to doubt it, but I have heard it also in HELCOM activities. And my question is, what is the correlation uh, in between uh, bonus and HELCOM? Because in the Baltic Sea, we have many institutions that to deal with cooperation and very often they overlap. Thank you. So the question about this a bonus program and uh, and Helcom and I believe my my colleague from the uh, regional policy director general of the European Commission under Schlitholm uh, can comment on that. Yes, I will, I will try to answer, even though it's not uh, really related to the DG I'm working for. But uh, I mean, Helcom is the political framework, and also where all is a, it's an intergovernmental body dealing with the sea environment, and it's it's a long-term political body. Uh, the bonus program is basically a, a funding program where you take 50 million out of of the uh, Seventh Framework Program, and then you add. Uh, 50 million in um, in national funding, but I mean the the aims and the objectives of the bonus program is very well correlated into the aims and 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 uh, objectives of 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 Helcom. I know that they have been cooperating intensively between Helcom and and the bonus secretariat in making sure that there are no sort of differences between the two. But one is the political body, and the other one is is a financial. Uh, financial framework for for making sure that uh, we also have research that are 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 being funded in in line with the objectives of of, of Helcom. So I see it is a good example of where you manage to find um, uh, financial solutions to political objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Are you satisfied with the answer? Mm hmm. So, some more questions for the panelists. If, yeah, Indolus, please. Thank you. My question is to Mr. Edlund. I'm uh, looking at the, at the, uh, your conclusions, and you are speaking mostly in a way that uh, approach has a potential or. Uh, can help, so it is in kind of, of, of put, as a potential, uh, speaking as a, as a strategy, as a potential. And it is not secret that the strategy for the Baltic Sea region was created uh, on the basis of existing or planned projects. And, and my question would be, uh, in your opinion, what are the main uh, challenges for the strategy to develop uh, successfully in the future, and uh, one we now heard about is, uh, of course, uh, direct access to financing, but what uh, maybe are some others, in your opinion? Thank you. I think uh, uh, you, you always have to start with um, um, uh, what, do you, what do you want to achieve? The priorities and we, uh, what are the possibilities for uh, to cooperate around the issues, the priorities? Uh, these issues uh, are always important to have in focus because this has to be, the whole work has to be demand driven. It has to be uh, relevant to the business, it has to be relevant to the regions, it has to be relevant for those who participate. So it's one of the challenges is to, to uh, uh, have all the uh, companies and actors and people involved in, in a way. So, so what is, is done in the strategy really matters. It must make a difference. 
it's uh, to focus on that the transnational cooperation really gives an added value for the companies, for the clusters. That's one focus. Uh, and I think uh, the governance structure also for the, for the work uh, is an important part. And I'm quite optimistic that we have taken in BSO Stars an important step of, of, of finding a good platform for governance uh, discussions of, of uh, how we should develop the cooperation on innovation. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to abuse my position as the moderator of this session to ask a question myself, and this question is addressed to Mr. Edlund. So, during your uh, presentation, uh, you called for clear earmarked financial sources. Uh, for Baltic Sea strategy in the next financial framework. Oh, of course, we will come to the uh, financial sources in the next session uh, of this uh, conference. But uh, still, you know, to follow up on your uh, uh, presentation, uh, I would ask you to expand uh, on, on this argument. Of course, uh, the EU strategy for Baltic Sea region is very much a um, horizontal instrument, as we like to say in, in the Commission, or uh, a, a cross-cutting framework. But uh, do, don't you have the impression that the, uh, in, in the practical implementation, the uh, boundaries of this framework, I'm talking about both financial and operational boundaries of this framework sometimes appear rather vague. Uh, as, a, as an example, of course, when uh, all the uh, countries who are party to the Baltic Sea strategy were asked to indicate what share of EU funds they dedicate to the Baltic uh, Sea strategy, it suddenly turned out that Latvia is spending 93%, I believe, uh, colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, on Baltic Sea strategy. Of course, that is very impressive number, but it also seems to suggest that perhaps uh, where there is a will, then uh, anything you do can be treated as Baltic Sea, as, as uh, related to the Baltic Sea strategy. So do you see any ways forward for, for clear uh, setting clear boundaries in the next, next programming period, both financial and operational terms, for the Baltic Sea strategy, and considering that there are representatives of uh, foreign ministries and other institutions of several member states present, how, uh, and they will decide on it in the, um, on, the, on the commission proposal for our next uh, financial framework. How would you argue for, uh, if you su indeed support it, for introduction of such clear criteria? Mm. Uh, I think you misunderstood my slides from the beginning. Uh, because when I, I, in one slide, described that the current situation is that there is no earmarked mm -hmm. money to the strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, <coughs> the strategy has to be funded by existing programs. That's the situation today. And when I described the future, uh, I, was, uh, I was only, I was focusing on the need for an alignment, in, a, need for, a need for that all the different programs, the structural funds, the regional, the national programs, uh, and other relevant programs, has an international strategy where the BSR cooperation will be a natural part. And I think if every program really approach how they should uh, cooperate with, with partners outside the country, outside the regions, uh, and how they should use this cooperation for their own economic growth uh, and their own innovation um, um, efforts, uh, that will lead to that it will be much easier to get funding to the different mm -hmm. projects within the BSO strategy. So I know that the question of having a special budget line in the next six-year period for, for, for the BSR strategy, that is quite uh, controversial, and I'm not arguing for that. Uh, uh, 
I know that this is a political issue, and I also hear that people think that uh, if this is something that is stressed uh, very hardly, it will be quite difficult to get all 27 countries in the European Union to, to approve that it will be a special budget line of European level for the Baltic Sea states. So, uh, and I have respect for that. So, this is a political issue. I also know that there are people who argue for a special budget line. But what I emphasize more was that it must be a dialogue between uh, this cooperation in the Baltic Sea strategy with those people who uh, de develop the operational programs in the, for the structural funds, both from a national and regional level. So, we, so it will be a kind of alignment in priorities and goal setting, and this will lead it will will lead that it it will uneasy, it will make it much more easy to get funding uh, of the same project if this discussion will be carried out when the content of the program are being developed. And I also think that if uh, when the guidelines now and the, uh, the, the discussion between the Commission and the governments uh, around the Baltic Sea on the next six-year period, when this discussion will be held, uh, if uh, the goals of, of, of have transnational cooperation, transnational, transregional cooperation, the goal for smart specialization and this type of, of, of uh, ambition, if, if it will be agreed upon, some basic principles between the government around the Baltic Sea and the Commission on this issue that will make it very much easier in the future to get specific project funded. Thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification. I think we, we all accept that uh, financing issues are perhaps the most sensitive of them all, and uh, I'm sure we'll hear, hear more of it in the third session of our conference. Now, do we have one final question for the participants of this second panel? Yes, please. It's, it's probably just, it's more of a follow-up, because I'm, I'm kind of skeptical. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think uh, what Sven Gunnar... Sorry, could you introduce yourselves, please? Sorry, Alistair Reed from yeah. uh, Technopolis. So I'm, I'm kind of, Sven Gunnar Edlund says, well, what the step we need to do is have better design programs with a, a more clear Baltic Sea component in the national level, and that will help us to fund projects as they come, come up. And I, I think, yes, that's something we can do, but the, the practice, what we see from the past is that this has not led to optimal investment. And I think there are a whole range of examples, but I, I, I pick on one because our last colleague uh, gave the Lithuanian Valleys uh, situation, which I know a bit about. And if you take the Marine Valley there, which you mentioned, and they're investing in a ship uh, which will have uh, about a third or a bit, a bit more time used by the, the Lithuanian researchers according to their own calculations, then you have to say, well, why, why is there not cooperation between the three Baltic states to have one research vessel uh, that would be operated by all three uh, countries' research teams, and all three countries would save the money on, spe on spending on a ship. And it's, it comes down to really, I think, economically uh, and, and research-based and innovation elements that you can get much more uh, money, uh, bang for your buck, as the Americans say, by, by cooperation. And saying that it will come up from national strategies, national operational documents, and because we've written it in our national operational document that yes, we will cooperate with our colleagues, it's a start, but I, I, I have doubts. So I think the, that's why I was in my presentation of this morning, I was saying the programming approach that you're trying to push for the, the, the Baltic Stars or the bonus program approach where you, you say we're putting 50 million from the commission budget, 50 million from national, and let's try and coordinate and, and, and work together on a, a, a program on a longer term basis is, is a way of getting around constraining member states, which most member states don't like being told, put aside this bit of money, but at least they're putting in a cooperative way into a, a joint program uh, the money and everyone then works together on that joint program. So I think unless we move to some programming approach at Baltic Sea level, it, it won't work. And so if we continue with either interreg type projects, which are 
you know, produce what they produce, which is often not, not a huge amount of, uh, of concrete output, or national programs which are not really integrating the Baltic Sea element. So I think we need to really go for some form of programming approach that doesn't constrain member states to the point that they, that they get upset about it, but at least gives them an incentive to put money into a common pot and work together. Thank you very much. Uh, I see at least two, two sides to your question. One is about the purely um, programming uh, ex uh, exercise side, and I'm sure Mr. Mr. Uh, Edlund um, uh, will comment on that. And I also uh, detected uh, a question related to the commitment of uh, countries in the region to such cooperation, such as in the example of the research vessels that you mentioned, and perhaps the colleagues from, from uh, member states would like to uh, comment on that. But first, uh, Mr. Edlund, please. I think uh, uh, if, if you think of uh, a long-term objective, I agree with you. Uh, it's more a matter of uh, speed and in time. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing, if you talk about the, the concept smart specialization, uh, smart specialization uh, in the Baltic Sea region would really lead to, uh, in the long term, that you have uh, focus on specific areas in different parts of the region and they are combining and working together in a smart new combination that will be competitive. Um, but I think we said it's a process to develop that. Uh, so it's not so easy to sit down tomorrow, put together some people and try to agree about this. Uh, I've seen uh, the same issue on the national way. I mean, I'm coming from the National Agency for Innovation in Sweden. And uh, you have about the same debate also within the country. You have different regions around Sweden. And the uh, uh, smart specialization issue is also applicable there. And it's not so easy to, 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 to I, it, it, it's a process to develop this. I think we, I agree with the long term. And, and uh, as I've said, uh, if we can develop the kind of high level group uh, community that we have Escape, uh, created now. Uh, I think uh, that is uh, an excellent platform for, for, for uh, developing this thinking of thoughts and find the processes of how and in, in which uh, time schedule, time frame, we can go forward. Thank you very much. Ambassador Milk. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, looking to uh, Baltic Council of Ministers uh, priorities and uh, one of the points here is enhanced opportunities for shared use of research and development infrastructure. And, and it is under the extremely ambitious name of a BTI, Baltic Institute of Technology or something like it. But uh, it is exactly about looking to all those problems where is a network of experts uh, who contact each other. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, when we end Estonian presidency, we can report what we are able to do and what are the needs for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Would the Lithuanian delegation have something to add? Well, I, could, I would like to refer to the comment about the commitment. So I think that uh, uh, the commitment has already been proved uh, by working together like for more than two years and uh, producing BSR STARS program. And actually, this uh, program was uh, basically done uh, just uh, by free will of all countries, I mean, around Baltic Sea region. So I think we have already have a commitment and we have already a ground uh, to, to move forward. Mm. Thank you.